Hello everyone, Shinigami san here to do a review on Boku no Hero Academia episode 11. I hope you guys are alright, hope you guys are fine. Now let's get into the greatness of this episode. Now, I can't stress how worried I was for this episode. I can't explain and tell you how worried I was for this episode. Mainly for the action. Mainly for when you saw um, they raised the head Aizawa Sensei fighting Nomu or Shigaraki fighting Nomu, not Nomu, sorry, um, Aizawa Sensei, all that kind of greatness. Like, I was so worried that we'd get censored. I was so worried that Bones would censor the crap out of that. But I was just like, oh. when I saw that in all its glory, when I saw, even though it was a little bit like, you didn't want to see that, but like, you're glad that it wasn't censored, or like, you, you're, you're glad that it wasn't shadowed out. I was happy. I was hyped, man, because it done it justice, honestly. I can't stress how great this anime is. I can't stress how great the adaptation of this anime, um, of the manga, actually is. It's, it's beautiful. Now, this episode was awesome. I'd say best episode of the series so far. Well, for one, first of all, just the hype. Because it got people so hyped, we got a lot of action in it, and it was it, had, it was focusing on so many other characters. This is what what I've loved about Bug the Hero. We'll, they, um, it will always get in focus on different sort of characters, not always just Deku or All Might. It's always um, it's always spread out. You could say evenly, I and mean, and a lot of things happened in this episode. There was greatness. So I have to talk about Aizawa Sensei and just talk about how much of an MVP that man is because he's fighting all of these guys you, you gotta bear this, you gotta understand this for a second he's fighting out all these villains like a beast bear in mind that this isn't, this isn't his natural environment that he's normally adapted for Aizawa Sensei is normally used for um, he's normally um, best in short short fights with not many people mostly like surprise attacks that's why he kind of fights in the shadows as well but no he's fighting out in the limelight he's fighting like 10 plus villains he's coming in like a beast he's doing all these flips he's flipping everyone around throwing him all over the place and then Nomu comes in and just grabs him and just destroys him like literally what's gonna happen <sighs> I don't I can't even stress man like especially anime only you people it I'm so happy for you guys, because we made it, like, we finally made it, man, to see the hype that is Pokemon My Hero, to see this series. This was, this is when, when this, when this season one's finished, people, when everyone's finished season one, all the 13 episodes are done, people are going to look back on these, these scenes, that's what people are going to think of when they look back on this, on season one of Pokemon My Hero Academia, and that's when Nomi and Shigaraki comes in, and when all the villains come in, and they're all fighting, that's what everyone's going to remember, because it's just that greatness. Now, and this episode kind of, you could say, split into two halves. We've got a lot of focus on a lot of characters. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if some of you guys actually uh, forgot their names. Like, for example, we saw this guy called Kaminari. And Kaminari, he's the electricity guy. He seems like quite of a joker at first. But if you think about it, his power is extremely um, OP. It's very OP. I've always liked electricity kind of powers. Things with lightning and electricity I've always thought was awesome. Now, this guy, he's... He, the way his power works, um, he can conduct electricity, but it's only from himself, and, he sh and so it works by him like shooting it, shooting it out, or by um, people touching him and they get electrocuted. So it's an awesome quirk, but it does have its downsides, and that's what we know about Pokemon Hero Academia. With their quirks, there's always downsides. Um, well, not necessarily downsides, but there's always limits, and those limits can always be broken, as we see All Might say all the time with that plus ultra um, greatness. Now. Uh, Kaminari. So when he, if he, if he over, if he over exerts the watt limit, his brain becomes fried. So that is extremely dangerous because what if he goes like, if he super like, if he surpasses the watt limit, if he exceeds it by a tremendous amount, would that make him brain dead? Like it possibly could. So you need to be careful with these quirks. So we found in a couple of episodes previously that. Um, the students, they need to be careful because these quirks can endanger people's lives, which we see in this chapter. Um, people can be dead from that. We, not in this chapter, sorry. People can be dead from which we've seen in this episode. So um, it, re it really gives that sense of urgency. And I must say, this episode it went through the roof, man. Like the, uh, the sense of urgency 
was actually phenomenal. I, it, it was just, I, honestly, it was so beautiful. Um, the scenes which was used was awesome, especially when Shigraki's fighting out, running out to get Suyu and about to touch her. I was just like, wait, what's going on? And the thing is, you're seeing Deku as well. Deku's looking and he's re and he's remembering what Shigaraki done to Azaira's elbow. So it seems like his quirk, whatever he touches, kind of disintegrates. And then you see Deku looking at it, and he, in his mind, he's picturing like um, pretty much Suyu just disintegrating and dying. So it was quite dark. Like you, you guys have seen that. We're getting some hints and touches of dark elements coming into the series, especially very graphic. Um, gory and violent em elements and I'm not saying that's amazing I'm just saying I'm glad that you know like it's not censored that's what I'm glad about even either way I did love the action in this episode the action was awesome we saw Kaminari now let's talk I, I, I'm glad I holding myself I was about to say let's talk about best girl now some of you people know maybe the anime only is the anime only is maybe familiar about this topic but I'm sure you manga people are familiar about you know the best girl discussions like who's best girl in this series now, I'm not gonna say it's Momo. I'm not gonna. I, I, I my mind always wonders. You know, there's there's so many best girls in this series. It's, it's, my mind always, you know, it it changes its, its decisions. But like, like it's hard to say how she's not best girl because Momo is the beast. First of all, her quirk is awesome. Now I'm not gonna say you know what we saw in this episode. I, I, I'm a, I, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a good man. I'm a clean. I'm a, I'm quite. I'm a pure man. But <laughs> Momo, man, the greatness that is Momo, man. Like, oh, goodness sake. I'm not saying. I can't say. I can't say she's the best girl. I can't say she's the best girl. Control yourself. Control yourself. But either way, the greatness of her quirk is awesome. I've always said this when I first started the manga. I was always thinking the possibilities of of her quirk. It's it's honestly. The possibilities that it could be improved, it's limitless. Like, the sky's the limit. Imagine if... I'm wondering, like, what's the limit to how big her creation can be? Because her quirk... First of all, I'm actually... I really, the reason why I do like her quirk is because it's not too OP. Because it's not like, for example, whatever she imagines, she can create it in an instant. No, it's only created on... She needs to know, like, the molecular structure. She needs to know the structure of what she's creating. That's why she's so smart, and that's why she got... She's, has a vast knowledge on product, on materials and everything because she needs to know the materials and how it's structured for, for, so she can make it herself. So, it pretty much depends on her, her knowledge on how she knows what's made. For example, if she knew how a car is made, um, well, I wouldn't say a car. Let's say, for example, she knew how a, a structure, like a mechanism for a cannon is made, then she'd be able to make a cannon. If you kind of get my gist, stuff like that. So it's not, it's not. It, you could say it's listed to her imagination, but mainly based on her knowledge and her uh, what she actually knows. So she needs to know the structure of whatever she creates, and that's pretty cool. And I don't know if it was said in the anime, but in the manga, the the, the definition of a quirk is yes, she can create whatever she wants, obviously with her knowledge, but um, her, she she can only create through the open areas of her skin. So that's why we see it in this episode, like her her um. What's it called? Like the straps around her bust, it kind of snaps open because everything she only creates things on the explosiveness. Is that even the word? Explosiveness? I don't even think she can only create um, things on the areas of her exposed skin. So I think her 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 her, her whole midsection is exposed. Same with her like forearms. And then you see it with her back as well. So it's only from those kind of areas. So that's why her costume's very um, you could say scarce or very sparse. Now. We were, the other things which happened in this episode, and obviously we saw the greatness that is like Shigaraki and all that kind of stuff. I want to talk about number thirteen for a second. Now, this oh, I, I said earlier before in this review that the sense of urgency increased to a like went through the roof. Now we see number thirteen, and we're beginning to really under, we're beginning like the villains are really showing that these guys are no jokes. These villains, like the the, the three or four of them. Um, and that's obviously Shigaraki Nomu and the uh, the teleportation guy. They're seeming to be like they're the, they're the ones which have obviously got all the power and they're the serious stuff, and they're the serious ones. The other ones they just seem like people that just recruited normal kind of um, street criminals, you could say. They weren't they're not that very much experienced because we see people like Todoroki, Bakugo, and Kirishima. These guys are taking them out like it's easy. So um, this black this uh, teleportation guy. Just takes out number 13 like that, and I'm just like, what? Oh man, number 13, like, oh my goodness, that was, that went, that was 
disgusting. Like, she, he, the teleportation makes another warp gate behind him, her, so her or him, number 13, so the, the number 13's black hole gets himself from the back, so he was basically defeated by his own power, but you see his whole costume, like the back ripping apart, and again, censoring, thanks guys, we, we didn't get any of that kind of censored, that's why I was really worried for these scenes, so I'm glad that these scenes weren't actually censored, and like, Shigaraki's elbow, that was disgusting, you literally seen the skin crumbling off, that was nasty, but like, just imagine how much that would have hurt him, yet yeah, he was still fighting, especially, that's why I'm saying Isaiah Sensei is the real MVP, because even with his elbow being, elbow, um, being crumbled, even when he was getting smashed into the ground, and when you saw Nomi smashing him into the ground, craters were being made. So it wasn't just a little, you know, uh, pat to the ground. No, no, this was a, this was a full-on thrust into the ground. He still stood up and erased Shigaraki's crack. That shows you a hero is a hero to the end. Like, even if, for example, because this seems like his life's on the line, they're, they're, they'll never stop being a hero to the end, they'll never stop what it takes to keep saving people, they'll put their life on the line to save someone's life, to save their students' life, and we see All Might coming in at the end, not with a smile, instead the man is angry and he's carrying his jacket, that's what I thought, I thought it was so sick, like, All Might, the man knows how to impress, he dresses to impress, he comes in with that anger, top button still, looking sharp and fly, holding his jacket, making sure it's not creased, and he's coming in to lay the smack down on people. So I'm so excited to see All Might, All Might to just, just, just unleash the savagery against these people and just show them who's boss. So this is going to be real hype. I can't wait with Ida, obviously. We see Ida, Ida escape from this episode, so he's obviously going to go back to the school. So we'll probably see more pro heroes coming. So it seems like, um, it's... It seems like it's inevitable that these villains, obviously, they may get defeated by the pro heroes, because if more pro heroes on their way, like, it seems like it will be game over. So, um, this episode was awesome. Uh, it was, it was just like, it was mighty. This episode was mighty. Yes, it was all might worthy of approval. It was mighty, man. Like, I'm so excited. I can't wait for next week's episode. It's crazy. We're already 11 episodes in. That's fast. So, um, only two episodes left. Now, uh, tell me from the comments below what you thought of this episode, tell me what you liked, tell me how hyped you were we saw my boy Tokiyami, if you know, you know Dark Shadow, yes boys. Um, tell me from the comments below what you thought of this episode, and subscribe for weekly reviews of Boku no Hero, the anime, and the manga. Tell me what you liked, if you liked anything that I had to say, drop a like, that would be greatly appreciated. Shingami Sam, and I'll see you next week for that greatness, that is episode 12, and I'll see you for the manga if you guys read it. Shingami Sam, goodbye.